I've been sharing on the kingdom. We've had a look at thinking as a kingdom citizen. Then we last week we did, we looked at discovering God's priorities. This morning I want to have a look at the distinction of a kingdom citizen. What distinguishes a person as a kingdom citizen? I'm so sick and tired of people saying that they are Christians, but their lives don't display the fact that they're Christians. In other words, I would rather that people never call themselves Christian. In fact, quite frankly, if I'm frank with the church, I would say you are never to call yourself a Christian again. Because when people call themselves, I'm a Christian, it's become a religious term. What does it mean? It probably means, you know, I, I believe that Jesus is the Messiah. doesn't necessarily mean, however, that I live accordingly. So, actually, when someone says, what are you? You need to say, I'm a kingdom citizen. If you're a child of God. Not a Christian. Because it's become a religious term. The world looked at the, Christ, the people that uh, were kingdom citizens and they said those people are Christians because they were Christ-like. Hence it was the world that called people Christians. They never went around and said, I'm a Christian. Never. Never, never, never. The world called them Christian because they were Christ-like. If you are not Christ-like, how dare you call yourself a Christian? But this, in this day and age, already there, it's become a religious term. And therefore, I would encourage you not to call yourself a Christian, but a kingdom citizen. And the minute you say that, gives you an open door to speak into people's lives. Okay? Those of you that don't understand, let me read Luke 4 verse 43. For those of you that weren't here, just as a recap, Jesus said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because that is why I was. Did Jesus, was Jesus sent to come and drown on the cross? His prime objective in coming was to establish his kingdom here on earth. That is why he was sent to establish his kingdom, his rule and reign here on earth. And then he gave us the baton, and sadly, much of the church has dropped the baton. And God is saying, I want you, the church to pick up the baton again. Matthew 24, 14 said, In the gospel of the kingdom, not the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of the, the what? Of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Not the gospel of Jesus. Jesus never preached himself. Show me anywhere in the Bible where Jesus preached himself. I'd love you to show me that. Remember what I shared with you last week? The problem why people are not coming to love and serve God is because we preach Jesus. We don't preach the kingdom. If you advertise the doorway of your shop, you will make no sales. You need to advertise the Merchandise. Hello? If they, because that's all they'll do. They'll say, okay, let me compare uh, Jesus and Muhammad. And then you get into all these silly debates. We need to preach the kingdom. And as we start preaching the kingdom, we'll see people come to serve God. What are the benefits of knowing and serving this amazing God? And then you'll come to understand, yes, that Jesus is the door. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And when you come to see, but wow, who is this king of this kingdom? You want to worship him. And then it becomes about him. But if you tell them first about him, you are lost. You will not reach them. So the message of the Bible is about a king, a kingdom, and his royal priesthood, his re royal priesthood, which is you and I, his kingdom citizens. Okay. So after the prayer meeting, while I was alone here, I was just I was speaking to God, and He reminded me of the story of the f you know frog. You know, a frog is very comfortable where in water, right? Put a take a a, a frog and put it in a pot of water. It'll be happy. However, if you start 
putting the temperature up, will it still enjoy the water? No pro problem. Doesn't even know the difference. And eventually what happens to the frog? We all know. It, the church of Jesus Christ, has been slowly boiled by the world. And much of the church does not even realize it and they are not dead. We have so allowed the culture of this world to infiltrate the church and it slowly boiled the church that the church is no longer relevant. Because we have adopted the culture of the world instead of raising the standard and say this is the standard of God and we will live by it. This is the day and age that we live in. And God is wanting us to change this. God is wanting to change it in all of our lives. So tell me, what culture do you live by? Kingdom culture? Or the worldly culture? Or must I say Christian culture? Or religious called Christian culture? I'm going to rather say religious Christian culture. It is crucially important for us to realize that we are kingdom citizens. And if you're a citizen of the kingdom of God, you have to live according to the decrees of the king. Not according to the culture or the decrees of your country that you reside in, like we reside in South Africa. 75%, maybe there's more, 85% that does this, you don't, don't know which that to believe, they say, of people in this country are Christians. I say, no, no, whoa, 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 whoa. There's no way on planet Earth that's the truth. They are religious Christians, maybe. I would say, I don't know, maybe you can get into a debate with me. Kingdom citizens, I don't even know if they are 5%. Kingdom citizens in this country. Deuteronomy 30 verse 16. Deuteronomy 30 verse 16. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I commanded you this day, by loving the Lord your God, by walking in His ways and keeping His commands and His statutes and His ordinance, then you shall live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you are entering to take possession of it. We are to love God by doing what? Obeying Him. This even took place in the Old Testament. He said, if you love me and you obey me and you follow my statutes, I will bless you with a long life. In the land that I'm about to give you. And we will see this whole thread coming through into the New Testament. If you walk in my ways, if you keep me, keep my commands, if you keep his statutes and his ordinances, he says, he will bless you. Now listen to the shocking statement that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, makes. Okay, are you ready? Matthew 19 verse 17 says, why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, there is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, obey the commands. Right, for the youth, let me just get this out of your system quickly, okay? When I ask you, how are you, and you say to me, I'm good, I'm going to say, no, no, you're not good. Only God is good. Ah, uh, don't be pedantic. Come on. We need to say, hey, we need to say, this is the standard. Only God is good. Are you with me? So the next time someone says to you, ah, I'm good. No, you're not good. Only God is good. That's your response. Let's talk according to kingdom talk, the style of the king. Let's talk according to the way he calls us to talk, okay? Secondly, it says there, Jesus replied, there's only one who's good. Then he says, if you want to enter life, obey the commandments. Who said that? Jesus said that. I thought you saved by grace and not through works. Mm. Why does he say, if you want to enter into the kingdom of heaven, you have to 
obey my commandment. And in this day and age, you get so many people, they say, no, 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 but I'm saved by grace. I'm not under law, which is true. However, Jesus did not come to do away with the law, but to fulfill it. Hence, you and I need to fulfill it by living according to God's ways. I don't obey the ways of God because I have to. I do it because I love him. Because I want to. You even read it in Deuteronomy. That's why the Bible says, even Jesus said, If you love me, you will obey my command. Those that say they love God and do not do what he says, what does the Bible say? You're a liar. Quite harsh, eh? There are so many people in this day and age who say, I love God, but they live exactly how they please. If you say you love God and hate your brother, you're also a liar. If you say you love God, then you will obey God's command. And this will show that you are truly a child of God. Remember I shared with you, if you have the wrong concept, you'll have the wrong conclusion. If you have the wrong conclusion, you'll have the wrong lifestyle. If you have the wrong lifestyle, you have the wrong theology. And that's why most Christian lifestyles are wrong. Because they, they're influenced by the world and not by the king and his decrees. Our constitution is what? The word of God and we are to live according to the word of God. Now the world comes and say, says in our nation, you are not allowed to discipline your children. And I say, whoa, 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 I'm a kingdom citizen. I will adhere to the decrees of my king. My king says that I am to spank my kids if they are out of line, not with abuse, in discipline of love. Now here comes the world and says, you're not going to do that. Who am I going to obey? The king of kings or a little pukkaji government that tries to dictate how I'm to raise my kids? That knows nothing, that had have illegitimate children, children that do not obey the law, that are fornicators, abusers. I mean, and they want to tell me how to run my household when the king of kings decrees how I'm to do it. Uh -uh. I submit first to the king of kings. If any law goes against this, I submit to this. I don't submit to this. Oh, they're discussing it on carte blanche. Those of you that have DSTV, listen to it. I actually started with my doctorate in that, and I got so hammered I left that institution and <laughs> went to another one. They were so godless. Sorry to say I'm sorry, but uh, in any case, different, different story altogether. Ah, if you say you're a Christian, then you better obey God's ways. Or should I say, if you say you're a kingdom citizen, you need to live according to the ways of God. Now, if you want to change a law, what do you do? You go for the legislation. That is why many laws have been changed. When someone wants to change a law in a country, they go for the legislation. And we've seen it around the world where homosexual lobbyists have gone and they've gone to the legislation and they've changed the law. And made it a norm for same-sex unions. They've even gone so far as changing the definition of marriage, which has always been the last 2,000 years between a man and a woman now to mean anything. And even the church, a lot of the church, has adopted that couch and said, yes, fine. God never said it is. Never, ever. Never, ever. And don't come to me and say, but Jesus never spoke on homosexuality. He spoke a lot on sexual immorality. All of that falls under that. Okay? And we, the world tries to say, but this is the norm. God says that's not the norm. And we are to choose to submit to God and to his ways. Now, if you are in the kingdom, you need to live according to the decrees of the king. 
The minute you live according to the decrees of the king, you have the you have certain privileges, rights that you and that and promises that you can claim for yourself, right? Okay. If however you do not live according to his laws, you forfeit the right of those privileges. In other words, if someone murders someone, what happens to them? They get be pu put behind bars. Their passport gets confiscated from them. Right? And who of you have a problem with that? Does anyone here have a problem? Please put up your hand if that happens. Not one of you. Very interesting. I wonder how many people out there would have a problem with that. Probably no one. Right? Death penalty should come back in. Yes, I agree. However, in a nation like ours, you'll have a lot of people put to death that actually probably don't deserve it because of the bribery and corruption, which is tragic. However, in a just society, yes, I agree. The problem is, here we have someone that murders someone else. They're removed from society and they, 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 they forfeit their privileges and their rights as a citizen of that country, right? Do you feel that's fair? All of us said yes. I can guarantee you everyone out there would say the same thing. Why is it that a lot of the world, when it comes to God, and he says, but if you do not live according to my ways and my statutes and my decrees, you will not have the same privileges and rights as those that choose to. Which means you will go to Hell, because I will shut you out from my kingdom. And everyone, you will have a lot of people say, but he, how can a loving God send people to hell? How many times have you heard that being said? Why? Because he's a just God. He's a fair God. He will not allow you into his kingdom if you want to violate his ways. You forfeit the rights and the privileges. There are over 7,000 promises that you and I can claim, but we can claim them when we live in ob obedience to the king. However, when we don't, we have no right to those claims. And we forfeit our authority as a kingdom citizen. And that is what God is wanting to restore, store, I believe, in every single one of us. We've all hear, heard that saying, talk is cheap. I want to see it in your lifestyle. I want to see it in your action. And we need to start being like that. And the world is like that. I want to see you. I want to see what's different about you. And may we live according to God's ways and not our ways. What distinguishes a kingdom citizen and a person of the world? The culture by which they live. What standards do you live by as a kingdom citizen? If, the, if you and I, as kingdom citizens, live exactly like the world, what shining light are we? And much of the church now lives like the world and they think, but ah, you're just like me. Philippians 3 verse 19 says, their destiny is destruction. Their destiny is hell, in other words. Their God is their stomach. Some people, all they think about is indulging in the pleasures of life. Food, drink, sex, and that's it. That's all they, they, that's, they consumed about those things. And their glory is their shame. Gay Pride Day. I mean, you want to... Be proud of an debauchery, debauchery and all these things, all these things that are God says are vile before him. How do you want to be proud of that? Guys coming to you and say, I slept with 20 girls in the last year. What are these? And you, you revel in, I mean, how can you do And yet the Bible says it, they glory in their shame. What is actually shameful. You should be ashamed of yourself, yet you glory in it. You think you're this macho man. That's the world. 
And then it says there, their mind is on earthly things. And God is saying, oh, 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 oh. This needs to stop in the church. This needs to stop. Millions of babies are now murdered all around the world. Why? Because they changed legislation. They went for legislation. And they said, if this thing inside a woman's womb inconveniences her, she has the right, it is her body, to abort. Does the constitution of the king of kings allow that? And this is the thing. We need to say, what is the constitution of our king saying? And we need to live accordingly. According to your and my constitution, can we get divorced? Hey? You see, we in the church there should be no divorce. Okay? And guys that have don't we're not talking about the past, we're not talking about the present. Okay? And God is saying here, I want to change things, I want to set you apart that you are almost seen as aliens in this world. Because you're different, you live by different ways. Is stealing acceptable in our constitution? Is gossip speaking behind other people's back? So when someone else starts speaking, you say, sorry, I do not want to hear this. Or you say, let's go and talk to that person. What about sexual immorality? Please note that that, in, that includes fornication in a lot of the transla- in most of the translations it says sexual immorality if you go back to the greek a lot of the time in that instance it will say fornication that means sex before marriage okay shaking up together and saying you're a kingdom citizen is just you're lying you're not deceiving me You need to understand, people look at your culture, the way you live, and that's how they define you. You don't have to say to me that, well, you know, uh, this is my belief system. If you have a gay, or part of a gay pride day, I know what your culture is. I know what your belief system is. Hello? If you come to church on a Sunday and you put God first in your life, I understand what your culture is. Do you understand? And a lot of the world looks and they look at your culture and the way you live. And they say that is what you believe. But if we live the same as the world, there's no differentiation. And this is much of the church. We're a frog dead in the water. Not at all respected or admired or revered in any way anymore. Because we have adopted the ways of this world. Is murder acceptable? No. Adultery, drunkenness. I mean, we can carry on and on on and on and on. So if if there's a norm in your cultural lifestyle that is against kingdom citizen lifestyles, you need to repent and say, Lord, forgive me, I'm wrong. Today I change. I, I I laughed at my wife. I actually shared it last week, but I have to share it again. She sh- she had a, a couple come to a wedding venue, and she says uh, they said to her, "No, but we don't drink." So my my wife wanted to say, "Oh, yeah, but you can fornicate." She didn't say it, but I mean, no, we Christians we don't drink. The Bible actually speaks hardly. E- at all in that regard, it talks about being unwise, having hard drink. It does talk about that, I accept. But it doesn't say you cannot. Yet it says all over the place you cannot fornicate. Yet that's an accepted norm. You can have children out of wedlock and that's no problem. Where does it, f- I mean, it's, do you understand? I laughed my head off and the way she said it, well, I won't repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you see, you can, you can change the constitution of any country. You cannot change the constitution of the king of kings. 
You have no right. I do not care what denomination you are. And there are many denominations changing their constitution to line up with the world. And God says, not a chance. You, you, you are no longer part of my kingdom if you do that. I would never be part of a group like that, to be quite frank. Our citizenship as a kingdom citizen is manifested in our obedience to the laws of God. Because if you love me, you will obey me. And the beautiful thing, I choose to follow God's ways and his statutes and his principles and his ethics and his values and etc. And we can carry on. Why? Not because I have to, but because I love him. Hence, I'm no longer under the law, yet I fulfill the law, not because I have to, but because I love him. So why, sh why should I be scared of the law? Does the law still stand? Yes. But it's, not a n a n it's no longer a, <gasps> I have to, it's, it's I want to because I adore the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who puts these things in place to protect me and to bless me and that I may have a long life and a successful and prosperous life in the land to which he is giving me. 1 Peter 2 verse 11 to 12 it says, Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain for some, from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such lives among the pagans that, they, that, that though they accuse you of wrongdoing, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. They might say, yeah, oh, but actually you this. And they, I mean, they do do that, isn't it? Yeah, but I saw you do this. No, 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 that's not true. You know it. I've had that. To abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Man, when you are younger, I mean, the sexual drive within young men is phenomenal, Right? Nowadays, they just say, well, men will be men. And they're saying that even in the so-called church. And I say, forget it. God says, forget it. You need to control the lusts of your flesh. What else does it say? No, no, I have to test drive this car before I marry it. This is sick, man. Nice little clear. Where do you find that in Scripture? Hello? We laugh because it's. We've seen that. We see it now even in the church. But that's not a church I want to be part of. And I'm not part of a church like that. I'm part of the kingdom of God. And God's kingdom says, ah, ah, ah. God does not want you to talk, does not want to talk to us about where we are right now, but rather where he wants us to be. To so forget about the past and say, right Lord, here I am, creating me once again a pure heart and renew a steadfast love for you. I, I will make right with you where I've gone offline. If you become a Christian citizen, it should affect your priorities. Today is not a day to make another income. It is to be in the house of God and to worship Him. Amen? That's a priority. To stand up, read your children Bible stories, to pray with them. Those are priorities. Your values. Your values should be according to God's values. Not according to the values of this world. Our belief systems. Yeah, but I believe this. Okay, what does the Bible say? Does the Bible say that you can believe that way? Our morals. It should affect our morals. What is your, what is your moral compass? I believe the church at large has lost 
complete, the compass of morality completely. And it is a shame. It is horrific and it is sad. Your lifestyle should change. Your culture, the way you live. You, we should be seen literally as aliens. Say, so, but you are just so different. Why? How come? Why? Why? Because I live according to the standards of my king. Your behavior. Do you behave just like the world or completely different? When someone attacks you, how do you react? In the opposite spirit or the same spirit? Our attitudes, your standards, your celebrations. What do you celebrate? What you celebrate will define your culture and what, you, what people believe you believe. Your relationships. Who do you hang out with? And I don't mind people hanging out with non-believers. I think that's good. How are you going to reach them without doing it? But if that's your prime relationship, you're in trouble. Your ethics. What about your dress code? Ladies, what about your dress code? Oh, I love Jesus. But you're next to me and you're giving me a different, uh, something saying something different to me. Hello? Shouldn't be in the kingdom of God. What about your food? Do you, do you eat to enjoy and sustain yourself or do you, are you gluttonous? Or you eat just because it's there for the sake of it. What about drinking? Do you, do you overindulge and get drunk? Not in the kingdom. Your responses to people. Is it in love? Or do you respond just as the world would? Your rejection. Do you reject behavior that is unbecoming in the kingdom? Or do you just accept it? Part of, no problem. There's no ways we can do that. What about your acceptance? If you accept certain things. I remember when I was a kid. We had people come from Germany and my parents would not allow them to sleep in our house if, because they were not married. It was his, uh, what do you call it? Mistress. Yeah, okay. He was his mistress actually. He used to do portraits of this girl. So yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> you don't have to carry on to that extent. But they said you're welcome in our home. You know that. You've been here before. However... If you want to sleep in a home, you'll sleep in a different bedroom. If you choose not to, you can sleep outside in the caravan. So they slept in the caravan. Do you understand? They would not accept standards that were not kingdom. And it is always stuck with me. Hello? How dare you as a kingdom citizen allow your kids to come in there and fornicate under your roof? Forgive me if I'm treading on your toes but we need to lift the standard of God and say this is the standard of God we are not going to lower the standard of God to appease us because you cannot lower the standards of God the ways of God the morals the ethics the standards the precepts the you can we cannot do this they're there and they will never change God Jesus God is the same yesterday today and forever amen he will never change we change. We try and change culture to do this the whole time. God says, ah, I need to do this. Come on, guys. What about, do you have a spirit of excellence? When you do things, do you try and do what you do to the best of your ability, to the glory of God, or do you do it because, well, let me just do the barest minimum because that is required of me. Your environment. Do you allow temptation in front of your eyes or around you? Or do you go to places that affect you? Don't do it. And then obviously your spirit. <sighs> when the righteous are quiet, the wicked will grow. And the church has been quiet 
and wickedness has prevailed in the world today because we've dropped the baton. Do you believe it? Yes. Should it be the case? Are you going to take up the baton? Are we going to take up the baton again and start speaking? Say, oh, 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 how dare you speak like that in front of me? <laughs> Who do you think you are? I'm a kingdom citizen. In my kingdom, we don't speak like that. Gives you an opportunity to minister to them. Now we just accept whatever. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11 says, Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Period. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. You cannot expect the same rights and privileges of a kingdom citizen. It says there, do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, neither the idolater, nor the adulterer, nor male prostitute, nor homosexual offender, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkard, nor slanderer, nor swindles will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were. Some of you were like that in the past. However, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the Spirit of God, hence forget what is behind you and strain on to that which is ahead and start singing the praises of God. Amen. Stop pondering on your past. Forget about it. You can't change it. However, you can say, yes, I was there, but I will no longer go back there. Amen. Don't let the, don't wear, the Amen. Don't wear that t-shirt. Don't wear that. Take it off. Burn it. Once it's burnt, you can no longer see it again. White as snow. That's what Jesus says. He wants to come and wash us as white as snow, that, we've, that we are, have a new slate before him. Yes, but I did that. I was unwise there. I was foolish. But I have a new beginning. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old is gone, the new has come. And then we live accordingly. And we do not try and pull down the standards of God to our standard. You'll never do that. No, none of us will ever do it. We need to say, there's the standard of God. Let's live by it. Come on, guys. Let's eradicate these compromises in our lives. Let's get them out. Let's be seen by the world as aliens. And that they will praise God because they see, wow, that is something I want. That is something I want to be like. So, Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 to 20 says, This day I call heaven and earth as witness against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Now choose life, so that you and your children may live, and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice, and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your, your life, and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your father Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. Why I share that is I believe God is saying to all of us, now choose life. Forget what is behind. Forget what is behind. Strain on to what lies ahead. And he says, I lay before you life or death, blessing or cursing. Let us choose life. Let us choose God's ways. Let us no longer choose the culture of this world. Why? Because I choose to be a kingdom citizen. And for me to be a kingdom citizen, I need to live according to the decrees and the ways of the king. Not the decrees and the ways of our country's culture. Amen? Who of us need, some, need to do some repenting? Say, Lord, I, I am going to change. I no longer forgive me for trying to bring down your standards and your ways to the world's standards. Forgive me. I'm going to change my priorities, my values, my precepts, my standards. I'm going to make sure that I live according to a kingdom citizen's constitution, not according to the constitution of this world, which is fading away. Come, let's pray. Father God, I thank you for every person here. I pray as we ponder and Make right with you. Every single one of us, Lord, we come before you in repentance. Lord Jesus, we ask you to forgive us. We, we've lowered your 
tried to lower your standard, which is impossible to do. We do we can try to lower them, but it just it cannot happen. Forgive us where we have tried to make ungodly behavior a norm in your kingdom. It is not, and we understand that, and we repent of that. Forgive us where we have spoken vilely of others, where we've slandered others. Forgive us where we've thought of others in a lustful way, Lord. Forgive us. Forgive us where we've lied. Forgive us where we've stolen. Forgive us where we have been sexually immoral. Forgive us where we've put things on our paths that has caused us to stumble. Help us to create an environment that it makes it easy to love you. Forgive us where we've been involved in relationships that you never wanted us to be involved in. Lord, I pray for every single person that we would make right with you and that we would choose to live according to your kingdom, precepts and your ways, that we can enter into your kingdom and enter into your rest. We choose this day. We choose this day life and not death. We choose blessings and not cursing. And Lord, I pray that as we live as kingdom citizens, that we would be able to claim the rights and the privileges and the promises that you have for us as your kingdom citizens, as your children. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would live in a day and age of such abundant blessing in every area and aspect of our lives that we would be amazed and realize that it is only because of your faithfulness and your hand of blessing upon our lives because of our obedience and love for you. So Lord, we choose from this day forth to obey you, not because we have to, but because we love you. And, and because we've entered into your kingdom and tasted and seen that the Lord our God is good. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen our feeble arms and our feeble legs, that we would not become spiritually dismayed and that we would not become disillusioned by the state of affairs in this world, but that we would look to you, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Thank you that you have the end. Thank you that we're going to be part of the end. Thank you that you have called us heavenward in Christ Jesus. And thank you that there will come a day that we will be glorifying you day and night. In your presence. Standing in awe of who you are. Lord, thank you that we can be a part of your kingdom. Even though that we in this world, we are not of this world but we are set apart. And would you come and set us apart? Would you come and purify us? And renew a right and contrite spirit within us. Once again, we pray in your precious name. Amen. And amen.